Daddy Squared. Gay Dad Saved the World. A daily dose of gay dads on the front lines of the global pandemic. With Alex McGann and Jan Dick. Hello. <laughs> Alex always laughs at my hello. <laughs> no, I want to invent my own hello. I told you. Not only I mean, Paul gets to have that. No, it's true. Walter Cronkite had his sign on, and you have hello. That's it's, fine. No, it's not hello. It's hello. <laughs> it's a little bit more mature. It's very more, masculine. I'm very sorry. Masculine. <laughs> mask for mask. Um, so, Alex. Yes. Our Netflix has been hacked. <gasps> All right. So, it turns out that that's FBI not true. Um, I want, yes, I got messages saying that my Netflix account was being used in other countries like Germany, and I got very upset and I changed the password. And then I found out that my family in Israel, my niece in Israel who's been using it, in order to get access to certain content, has been VPNing into something in Germany. So, basically, my, my niece is He's a know, hacker. She's a hacker. <laughs> and so I cut her off. Bam. Anyway, if I would love to hacked by anybody in Europe, it would be Sweden. Yeah, Just you have this. That. My husband Jan has this perverse thing about Sweden, um, which I don't really And they get. don't have coronavirus, apparently. They have some coronavirus. That's like the when Iran says we have no gays. They have some coronavirus, but they're doing very well, relatively speaking. So it's the beginning of May, Alex, and we have to talk about the pool. I had staff open the pool and prepare it because it is warm outside. Um, okay, let's just be clear. The staff is a pumper who we blew air into the pool, and that's the pool. <laughs> yeah, the staff we was. is mechanic. <laughs> the staff is us, and the, the pool came from Amazon, and we blew it up. But, you know, let you, why do you have to ruin my fantasies? Uh, it's huge. It's a 12-foot inflatable pool, and I have to say it's very impressive, except for its one. Yeah, it is, except for its one flaw. Which is that if, if you sit on the side of the pool, as my, our children have insisted on doing, all, all the, of the water rushes out. And it's and a it, tremendous amount of water. And it happened to us twice already yeah. in the past two days. But no, they are having our kids, a blast. Because our kids are a little bit uh, excited. Yeah. I'll just say excited. No, they are. They're having a, they're having a great time. Um, I've been, they're four-year-old twins, and I love the fact that they are still uh, insisting on going to the bathroom before they go into the pool, which is great, because I assumed you know, the other thing would happen. Um, also, something that's really interesting that Alex is uh, trying to do here with the pool is oh. to build a slide. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, our listeners can, can call human services now in preparation to what, God forbid, might happen. I am building a, a, a water slide. Um, and if the only problem is, of course, I don't know when I am building the water slide because if I'm not doing work or recording this podcast, I'm watching the children or sleeping. So we'll find a time. Or pulling your hair off, whatever. Uh, there's not a lot of hair left. Uh, but uh, I have the lumber that is necessary, and um, I have a plan that I wrote on a napkin, and I'm hoping to to execute that plan today Yeah, we're tomorrow. definitely going to follow up on this, even though I'm not sure it's going to happen. <laughs> well, anyway. we'll see. Today we're calling Las Vegas, Alex. I miss Las Vegas. Yeah. I love Vegas. Um, we're calling Romantel and Deer. Or no, maybe Telandier. Yeah, because he's uh, French. He's I French. love this French accent. Oh my God, it's Suddenly, so good. Finally, an accent other than Southern that I can really understand that it's an accent <laughs> because of my accent. <laughs> and it's adorable. It's, it's, I it's love more than this. adorable. And when you listen to it, you just feel like... You want to do it too? Y- no, you... <laughs> no? <laughs> that would not be well received uh, although I do an incredible French accent so he's a he works at the fertility center of Las Vegas yeah. and we think it's pretty interesting to check in on what's happening there because you know people are having babies from other places that are not Las Vegas yeah. and are st- suddenly stuck because there are no flights yeah, it's, so it's, how do they get their babies we wanted to check to check in with him to see how he's doing how his family is doing yeah and tell us more about it. And I have to tell you that I was really surprised because there was a part of me that thought that, you know, a fertility center in Las Vegas would be where you sort of, you go in and there's a handle and you pull it on it. You don't know which baby you're going to get out. You know, ding, 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 ding. It turns <laughs> out it's milk. not like that at all. <laughs> let's, let's go to the interview with Romain Talandier. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Romain? Yes, can you hear me? 
Yes. So, Are you at work right now? I'm back at work since yesterday. I see. But, While we're at it, why don't you tell us a little bit about your work? Yeah. So I'm work- oh, sorry for my accent, by the way. Never, uh, never, working- ever apologize for a French accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's so a I'm French accent, the- Israeli accent, everything's fine. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'm working for the Fertility Center of Las Vegas, and I'm helping all the European couples who want to have a baby through a surrogate in the United States, because unfortunately, surrogacy, it's almost forbidden everywhere in Europe. Wow. So they have to travel in the United States to make their dream uh, possible. Mm-hmm. Okay. How has it changed as a result of this? I'm going to assume it's changed an awful lot. I'm also assuming that uh, none of the pregnancy was delayed. No. So we cannot stop a pregnancy. <laughs> we cannot <laughs> tell the baby, uh, stop, <laughs> there is a virus. <laughs> so, yeah. So the huge issue with this virus, it's all the dads uh, who plan to travel to, to have their baby cannot travel anymore like, you know, you take a plane and you are going to the hospital and your baby is here and it's perfect. No, unfortunately, all the borders are closed. Mm. Uh, On the both side, like European borders are closed and you cannot cross the European border and American borders are closed, so you cannot go too. So at the beginning of this uh, crisis, there is a lot of baby who born without parents around so what what do they do with them it was a little bit like crazy so the lawyers because there is always lawyer involved in a surrogacy journey has to find a way to find like legal um, guardian in united states so it was a little bit crazy and now they found a way to have like special visas to have the parents uh, travel to United States, but it's a crazy work to do wow. because, like, you have to do a file as if you want immigrant, like, be an immigrant in United States, and ask for a green card. It's the same paperwork you have to to make just, just because just you to want come to, to the United to States, to, just to come to yeah. the United States and pick up your kid. You have to do this exactly. Wow. So tell me, but but what did they do uh, for the for the babies who were born without parents? What did they do with them? Did they stay in the hospital? Was there somebody? Who so yeah, them? so the baby stayed usually at the hospital can stay at the hospital like one week. So then you have to find a solution in this week. So sometimes some um, agency, surrogacy agency find a some somebody from their staff actually who could be a legal guardian and take care of the baby waiting for the dads Mm -hmm. Uh, me for example uh, i was like on the list of possible legal guardian hopefully nobody need me but you know we try to find a way to help all this baby and then uh, they open a little bit the border with this kind of visa just to go to take your baby. And are you personally working from home uh, through all of this process? For six week, uh, six weeks, I was uh, working from home. And since yesterday, I'm back to the office uh, because we need to, there is a lot of people who are waiting and we need to continue to have like babies and following up on the pregnancies and we cannot stop um, everything and, and doing ultrasounds and stuff like that. I, I see. And so you, you are there when they come in to get their ultrasounds and are you actually meeting new prospective parents at this stage or is that on hold? So no, everything is on hold for new journey. journey. Like um, I'm doing a lot of Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, ah. but nothing in person. Mm-hmm. Right. Understood. Tell us a little bit your family. Yeah. What you got? Yeah. <laughs> so I have a baby boy. He's six years old. Um, he born through a surrogate, thanks to a surrogate in California. Mm-hmm. And of course, he has no more school. So hopefully, my husband is working from home every time, like mm-hmm. virus or no virus, he's working from home, so he can <laughs> take care of. Is he American? <laughs> my husband is American. I'm the only one who is an immigrant. I mean, he's originally from Mexico, his family is from Mexico, but right. he's American, born and raised in America. Well, uh, you know, you, my husband and I, my husband and you can get together and have a support group for when you're married <laughs> to an American. I'm working on a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mostly can, complaints. <laughs> yes, we know. 
Can you tell a little bit about what you guys are doing to keep your kid busy during the day with all of this lockdown? Yeah, so we try to avoid the iPad maximum. So the the day begin like since this this crisis, uh, our son can make his bed by himself, clean his room, and all the day are beginning by that. Then I try to teach him French because at school he was not uh, learning French. So I try to put the little French lesson every day like that he can speak French. He's speaking French, but writing or understanding the alphabet is not easy for him. Mm. Um, we have some FaceTime with his friend because he's so frustrated, like he cannot play with his friend. He's at home since six weeks and sure. it's frustrated for him. So he's doing FaceTime. He's doing a lot of FaceTime with my family and friends also. Mm -hmm. And we try to keep him busy. We have, we have, we are lucky. We have a backyard. We have a trampoline in the backyard, Las Vegas weather, because mm -hmm. we are in Las Vegas. It's perfect. Yeah. So he can also enjoy a lot of the backyard. We have a little plastic pool and he's having a lot of fun. So we try to, to like combine like activities, like more intellectual activities with more physical activities in the backyard. But it's not easy because sometimes it's just like, okay, go take your iPad, go to watch Ryan Toys Review. Or I oh don't my know what, God. Oh, Ryan. Let's just walk. <laughs> Ryan. Ryan is, the <laughs> Ryan is the scourge of the earth, but what are you going to do? Can you, <laughs> can you tell us uh, with all of these changes and so many of these difficulties, are there any silver linings, any positive experiences that you feel like you've gotten because of the lockdown and all of these changes that have happened? For sure, more time with my son because, you know, when you are working a lot and we are working a lot with my husband, it, it's very nice to have, you know, this little listen of French or I kind of I'll have like a new relationship with my with my son and not only like playing I can teach him some stuff like that so I think the good thing for me it's this link with my son who is like better now or actually I maybe I learn a lot about that because when you see your kids only the weekend you have the good moments but now I also had some bad moments some moments where I have to to have him focuses you know it's not easy to have a, a child focus and like you have to do that and you you I have to to be strict sometime when I was not that strict with him so and also I realize what is the work of a teacher and thanks God there is teacher on this world <laughs> and thank you teachers <laughs> so so true um you know Romain, we want to ask you one more um, critical question before we end the interview um, and as a, a man from France, I'm almost afraid to ask you this question, but uh, we mm -hmm. want you to confess to the worst thing that you have eaten over the last two weeks since you have been forced to stay at home. Okay, so I'm cooking. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid of where this is home. going. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, this quarantine, it's making more time for me to cook. So actually, I'm eating better since I'm like that. Than oh, all right. So what do you cook, for example? <laughs> yeah, give us, all right, then at least give oh. us a thrill. So, yes. Easy things to cook. It's like quiche. Do you know, like quiche, of like course. Okay. eggs and ham, and that is easy to cook. And everybody enjoying that. Uh, you can also like do salad. It's I mean, I don't know what is the weather in California, but I think it's great weather. So you put vegetable inside and it's great. It's healthy. Uh -huh. I don't know. I have a barbecue and we use a lot of the barbecue outside, like grilled meat. I mean, I don't know. It's very easy for us in Las Vegas to find all the products we want. So it was pretty yeah. nice to have time to cook a little bit. You're right. I mean, I think that people who know how to cook and what to cook, it's also about the, the ideas that you have of what to cook. Like, I've never thought about uh, quiche. All we do is like spaghetti and rice and, you know, chicken. It's bad. That's, ba it's, that's basically what we eat for like... It's very bad. But, but I would argue that part of the reason is um, a lack of skill and knowledge. And part of it is because there's this kind of desperation for, you know, junk 
you know, comfort junk. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've unfortunately given in to that desperation. And I'm glad to hear you you have not. If you decide that you want to be to come clean and tell us the truth about some horrible, horrible thing that you've eaten, we will accept those submissions via email as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for sure, maybe we 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 warm up a frozen pizza. But ah! I mean, <laughs> that's that's a it good was one. not that bad. No, it's not. No, not at all. <laughs> Romain, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Yes, and thank you and so much for helping you. all these gay dads, especially at this crazy time, totally. to make their families. Thank you, thank you, guys, and good luck to you too. All right, all right. Be well. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's clear.